We looked last at permutations, using factorials to find them, uh, to find large possibility sample spaces. Um, but we're going to talk today about combinations, which actually end up being smaller size sample spaces, but similar in the way we calculate them to the way we did permutations. Let's talk about what the difference is. Um, if we have a, a group of things and we want to get them, uh, find out all the possible combinations where order is important, so first place finisher, second place finisher, third place finisher, etc., where order matters, then we want to use a permutation. We're going to get a really large number if you start with basically a large number uh, of, of, of things. So like seven things taken five at a time. You're going to get a really big number. But if you're looking for combinations instead, in, in other words, where you get a combination of certain members of a group, but you don't care about what order they're in, then you get fewer. So let's look at how to calculate a combination and also understand what's a little bit different. So just by way of example, if I have uh, four people, uh, Alfred, Betty, uh, Camille, and Danny, then I want to take from that group of four people and pick two and get combinations of two people. Well, if I wanted to do it with a permutation, then I want to know exactly what are the different order, uh, what are the different combinations of people, but specific to order. So if I go through and work this out, then I'm going to find that there's 12 different ways that I can put two different people together, and where A and B is different than B and A, because A is in first place, B is in second. So this is a permutation. This is where order matters. So we get 12 when we take what we call the permutation of four elements taken two at a time. Four factorial over two factorial gives us 12. But if I want to do it differently and say, you know what, A, B, and B, A, are essentially the same thing. I don't care about order, I just want that particular pairing of people. Then I can eliminate duplicates. And in that case, um, I'm doing what's called getting a combination. So when order doesn't matter, I eliminate the, one of the choices uh, and keep one that's good, and then I can come up with a subset or a smaller set of, of just the ones where uh, I get a unique value of a combination. When we want to do a combination, we use uh, the combination of n things chosen r at a time, or sometimes we say uh, n choose r, but uh, we can write it this way too with the, with the 4 down below with the c. Anyway, you're going to get 4 factorial over 4 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. So when you get that extra factorial in the denominator, which is what you get in a combination, there was only one factorial in the denominator for a permutation. When you get two or more in the denominator, you're going to get a smaller number overall. And that makes sense because you have fewer combinations, because order doesn't matter, than you would permutations. So, so in this case, we get six. Okay, so let's look at some examples where we're going to find combinations of people. Again, order doesn't matter. So you have five cousins at a family reunion. They want to go to Grandpa to pick up some pizza for dinner. Grandpa has only three seats in the back seat of his car. So how many different ways can people go with grandpa? <clears throat> so again, you want to figure out how many elements do you have? We have five kids. Um, we're going to take them three at a time because there's only three seats. So we work our combination formula because it is combination since we don't have um, any order mattering. <clears throat> so five factorial over two factorial times three factorial. Uh, you can just cancel out the three factorials and left with five times four over two or ten. So 10 different ways or 10 different groupings of three kids if you're going to draw them from a group of five. Semifinals of a track meet. The top three finishers advance to the finals. Again, order doesn't matter. So what, what are the top combinations of the top three finishers from a group of 10 runners? We have 10 elements. We're going to take them three at a time, plug it into our combination formula because uh, we know that order doesn't matter. 10 factorial over 7 factorial times 3 factorial is going to give us 10, 9, 8 over 3 times 2. The, the 7 factorials will cancel out, and then I can cancel out my 3s and 2s. You can also use your calculator to get these factorials, uh, but I, this one was pretty easy to do by hand. Okay, and <clears throat> now the trick becomes when you get a complicated problem figuring out, is it going to be a permutation or is it going to be a combination? You have to look really carefully and read to see if there's any indication that order is important. So, suppose a film manager has 11 films for an 8-screen theater. How many different arrangements exist for 8 screens to show the movies? Okay, now think about that. Is it a permutation or is it a combination? Pause the video if you need to think a little bit more about it.
Okay, hopefully you figured out that, well, n equals 11 and, and r equals 8, but in this particular case, it is a combination because the order doesn't matter. It's just pick an eight screens and stick them on. Pick, pick eight from the 11 films and stick them on screens um, and figure out all the different po possible combinations. So you set it up as a combination, and you're going to get 165 different ways to show the movies. Okay, from a class of 30 people, five will be chosen to leave early. The first will leave 10 minutes early. The second will leave 8 minutes early. The third will leave 6 minutes early, etc. How many ways can students be chosen? Okay, does order matter here? Is choosing one person going to affect who gets chosen the next time? Or are you just taking a group of five randomly? Okay, so I would argue that because you're going to pick one person 10 minutes early and then a second person 8 minutes later, it, the order is going to matter because, um, you know, if you want to do the, a little structure and, and have a, a, a series of lines, you have to figure out how many are going in each one. So you're going to find this to be a permutation. <clears throat> Again, n is 30, r is 5. Use our permutation formula because order matters. So we're going to go 30, choose 5. It's a permutation of 30, choose 5. Plug that one into your calculator if you want, um, but you're going to get a really big number, 17,000, 17,100,720. <clears throat> That's a lot of ways that kids could leave a classroom. <coughs> Excuse me. If we want to do it with the structure method, we'd say there's 30 ways for the first, then 29 for the next, and 28, and then 27, 26. So we're going to get this large number by setting it up with this particular structure method. Okay. How many ways can a five-card hand consisting of four cards from one suit and one card from another suit be drawn from a standard deck of cards? Sounds simple enough. This is actually problem number 29 of the textbook, the Glencoe book, page 694. And this, in my mind, is the most difficult combination permutation problem that we will, we will consider uh, in this class. Okay, how many ways can a five-card hand, okay, we want five cards, but that five-card hand out of a 52-card deck has to consist of four cards from one suit. Okay, so you have four cards out of a suit, so four out of 13, and one card from another suit. Okay, so that's one card of another suit. Um, be drawn from a standard deck of cards, but the two suits have to be different too. Okay, so we have to consider each of those factors and multiply them out correctly. And this is obviously, uh, I'm giving this to you because I know it's really hard and confusing. So let's walk you through it. <clears throat> So, five cards, four, four from one suit, one from another. Okay, so we want four cards from one suit. So we want to figure out what's the possible combinations. Now, again, order doesn't matter here. We're just looking for groupings of cards. So to find the number of cards, the four cards from one suit, we're going to take 13 cards and choose four at a time. 13 because they're all from one suit, okay? So 13 cards, choose four at a time. Next, we want to find one of f four suits chosen. Okay, so four, choose one, because this, uh, the, the suits that we, uh, the four cards from the one suit are going to be one of four suits. So we have four, choose one to get that combination of which suit. Um, so we have that. So those first two are going to uh, answer the question of the four cards from one suit, okay, because you get four cards from one suit and then one of four suits in a deck, all right? and one card from another suit. So how are we going to describe that one? One card from another suit. So you can have one of 13 cards from another suit. So that's going to be 13 choose one, okay, with your combination. And then finally, one suit has to be from the three remaining because one of the suits is already chosen. So that's going to be a three choose one. So these two are going to get you that second or that last card, the second condition, okay? Because it's an and situation, in all of these cases it's and, it's, f it's four cards from one suit and it's one of four suits chosen. So all of these are and situations, which means you multiply them. So we say 13 choose four, times four choose one, times 13 choose one, times three choose one, and I use my calculator to get that with my um, probability f functions and get this super large number, and that completes our lesson for today.